Well, it remains for me just to bring this conference to a close, but before I do so, I'm sure you'd all want to join with me in uh, thanking the Tonister for being here, um, simply because he has uh, spent the morning in London talking with the international press. As you know, yesterday we had the particularly important event in Doyle Aaron when the government announced that it was exiting the uh, bailout program, uh, and I think it was a moment for national rejoicing. <coughs> and I just want to thank, I'm sure on all of our behalves, uh, the Tonishta, Taoiseach, Minister for Finance, and his colleagues for bringing this, bringing this about. I can remember uh, talking to Tonishta two years previous to the general election about the economic crisis, about the particular crisis that had uh, befallen our own country. Uh, and as he faced into the prospect of assuming office, I can assure you he was particularly well aware of the challenge that he and his colleagues were facing into and how difficult the choices were going to be that had to be made. Uh, he was under no illusions, I think, nor any of his colleagues, as to what was in store for them, uh, both individually and as a, at a party level. Uh, so for that reason, I think uh, you are due all the more great thanks of the, of our, of the, of the Irish people. Um, second thing to say is that um, the in Institute uh, is a think tank, which means that it must occasionally think. And, um, it's focused and concentrated on strategic policy choices that affect this country. Uh, firstly, and primarily as a member of the European Union, but also then as a member of the international community. And I think that's what uh, people, especially of my age, would have become aware of. Uh, all processes are gradual and they don't really affect you overnight. There's very few occasions which you, where you fall off your horse like Saul on the road to Tarsus and suffer a moment of conversion. But at a particular point, I think, uh, we became aware of the, of the uh, impact, the combination of information technology on the one hand and uh, the arrival of the internet on the other in creating something utterly and completely new that was transforming society uh, and particularly transforming uh, commerce and indeed was, was transforming uh, politics itself, indeed campaigning. So it can be said that um, we began to work on this area mainly due, under the uh, impetus and guidance and assistance of our Director of Research, Jill Donoghue, about seven to eight years ago. And I think that today is a culmination of a lot of hard work, and I think that all of us would agree that uh, it's, it's been a very good point to have arrived at. And I think that what all of us will take away today, irrespective of our familiarity with this area, our, our expertise, is a very clear idea about the uh, centrality to our social, cultural, uh, commercial and political lives of cyber technology. It has become, as it were, the, the new highways. Uh, all societies and economies must function on highways, whether by water, by land or by air. And bodies must have arteries to manage the bloodstream. This, this is the bloodstream of, of, of contemporary society. And I think that the other thing we would have come away with was the frightening degree of interconnectivity that now, uh, that now, that's now facing us. I think it was, it was uh, Mr. Honan who made the point, I think, that there are probably now about 50 billion, uh, 50 billion devices interconnected to the internet and gr probably growing exponentially. It gives us a degree of the, not, our common vulnerability, I suppose, is the other theme that would have arrived at from today. And I was very much taken by the fact that this vulnerability arose around the concept of asymmetry. Uh, and to draw metaphors, I suppose, from military history between the, between the, the besieger and the besieged. Uh, the besieged usually are fairly static and have defences that can't be altered at, at great speed, whereas the besieger has a degree of manoeuvrability and flexibility. And I thought that this point was made very well, and it uh, really emphasized the point that we had to have established responses for dealing with this, because there was always going to be breaches. I thought that was the other interesting point that came, that came across. And uh, I suspect that what it, for many in the audience, it, it began to raise issues uh, in terms of national security, on the one hand. Uh, it particularly, I thought, brought into play, and I thought that Ambassador Ducaru's uh, contribution was particularly well made about the interdependence of the United States, the European Union and NATO in this area, um, because, to use the words of the Tarnishta, uh, we now belong to a global community, and global in a very real sense, and community in a, in a, in a very real sense. And I think all of us have got to rethink 
uh, the, the whole concept of cyber defences. I thought that the, um, at the same time the threat to commerce became very obvious during the course of the day and as Tanishta has rightly reminded us of course of the, uh, the <laughs> a, a graphic example of our vulnerability in this area uh, over the past few days here in Ireland. Perhaps it raises the question that notwithstanding the great degree of progress that has been made inside the European Union on this area, um, that it might be something that people at the level of Antonishta and others will begin to think in terms of a cyber union for the European Union to match that of the various other unions that we have created, such as the Economic and Monetary Union. In that regard, may I say that uh, that we're going to put this subject uh, higher up our agenda inside the Institute. Um, we will establish, I think, now a, a formal project team on this. We would look forward to working with you and your department, and particularly other departments, such as the Department of Justice, of course. Uh, and um, perhaps we'll be able to avail of the opportunity of sitting down and talking with you and your colleagues over the, over the coming months. It just remain, it remains for me now to thank all of the speakers who have come, especially those uh, who have come from a long distance, not least uh, Michael, Michael Daniel, whom is, whose presence here we particularly uh, welcomed. Uh, I want to thank Minister Rabbit for being here this morning and for getting us off the, the off, uh, flying start. Many of you have asked, will the presentations be available? They will be, as you would expect, they will be on our website, and as you would expect, they'll be up there pretty quickly. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that all of you would want to join me in thanking the uh, staff who have organised this uh, so brilliantly. Um, we have a terrific uh, IT team. I think you can see the evidence of that. They're also fantastically good at design. We're very proud of them, and uh, their, their work can be seen most particularly on our website, which you obviously will now uh, have a look at, I'm sure. Last two words. Those of you from the, who are here from the business community, I hope you see the value of today. I'm sure you recognise the importance of this particular topic. Just let me say there's an open invitation to work with you. We want to do that and think through what's in store for us. It's a message too as well for the political class, so ably represented by the Tonishta, and equally say that we want to work with you in thinking through the issues that confront us as part of the global community. Thank you for being here and thank you.